Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of So Many Sequels. I'm Josh, and today we have a very special episode for you. Uh, joining us is Samantha Isler, a talented actress from right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Samantha stars in the upcoming film Breakup Season, which is making its Oklahoma premiere at the Circle Cinema Film Festival on July 15th. We had a great time chatting with her about the film, her experiences in the industry, and what it means to bring this project to her home state. Uh, Breakup Season tells the story of a young man who brings his girlfriend to his rural Oregon hometown to introduce her to his family, but things don't go as planned. It's a heartfelt and intriguing film, and I can't wait for you all to hear uh, Samantha's insights and behind-the-scenes stories about it. So, without further ado, let's dive into our conversation with Samantha. All right, we are here today with Samantha Isler, uh, one of the stars of the new film Breakup Season. Uh, welcome to the show, Samantha. We're so excited to have you. Hello. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. I'm looking forward to chatting about all things film and just seeing where the conversation goes, but also talking about Breakup Season, which I'm super excited to promote and for everyone to see super soon. Yes, we are too. Um, I want to start this out with probably the most hard-hitting question on the list, <laughs> which is, can you name for us three of your favorite movies? Okay, three of my favorite movies. Easily Titanic is my number one movie of all time <laughs> for a couple of reasons. Do I, I, okay, I'm just going to explain why, because I want to. Oh, go Please ahead. go ahead. Uh, Please, okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like I actually s truly saw and appreciated it for the first time when I was about 12 or 13 years old. And... The movie came out, I think, like a year before I was born, a year or two. And um, growing up, I had seen clips of it. My mom would always show me little parts. But then I think I was 12 or 13 when I actually sat and watched the whole thing. And I, at that point, was doing theater and kind of started acting. I was always acting, you know, my whole life and performing yeah. in some way. But at that age, was really aware of it and appreciating it when I saw it. And... When I saw the film, I just thought it was so amazing that something could be at such a, a... A film like that could have such a grand scale. Like, it's a huge blockbuster film. There's these crazy special effects at this colossal level. Yet, the performances in the story had so much complexity and integrity. And I thought it was so cool that a filmmaker and all the filmmakers on that film... Mm -hmm in front behind the camera could create something that big that has that much heart. I think that's really cool because I think that's rare. There's, of course, you know, the wonderful exceptions, and but I think it's really cool to see something like that. So as a young actress, I just loved that, and I loved the writing, and I have, you know, like monologues from that memorized. <laughs> I have one of Jack's quotes, like, on my wall at home. So it's, yeah, that's definitely my favorite. Um, a second big one is Goodwill Hunting. It's my oh, second. okay. Um, nice, yeah. I, yeah, I love that movie for a million reasons. I love the story and the performances, but also as a young actor, I always really appreciated the young actors in the film. Mm. And I also loved how young the boys were when they created and wrote that film. I always thought that was really inspiring. And I always thought it was nuts to hear this incredible profound monologue come from Robin Williams to know that a relatively young boy, young man wrote that. Um, it can have that kind of perspective on a life that he hasn't really lived. As a writer, I appreciated that as well. So that's one of my favorite monologues in a film. And it's one of my favorite films of all time. And it's like such a quotable and wonderful film. So oh, that's a great answer. I love Goodwill Hunting. And then my third oh my gosh those two are like for sure for sure and then <laughs> my third changes all the time but i'll say because i was talking about today dead poet society is one of my favorite movies mm -hmm. as well um and yeah i i don't even know if i really have to explain that one i feel like everyone kind of loves and appreciates that film but it does not yeah yeah it needs no introduction again also <laughs> i think just watching it and it having young actors and I just always like as a teenager and stuff even in middle school when I saw some of these movies for the first time just like gravitated towards stories that had younger people whether that's people in their 20s or teenagers um and I appreciated that as a human being but also as a performer I thought it was so cool to see 
Ethan Hawke, uh, however young he was, you know, mm -hmm. in that film. So young, yeah. And all the guys in it, you know, were just really, really cool. And again, incredible performance from Robin Williams. I just adore him. And yeah. I love that it talks so much just about the beauty of art and stuff. So I really appreciate it. I love that film. So my, I feel like my number three constantly changes. Mm hmm because I could, I probably could give you like 10, but we don't have time for that. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's going to be my three because I was talking about that today and recently. So now, Three phenomenal answers. You know, Letterboxd, yeah. they have their top four that they like to yeah. put out there, you know, so we got to carve out. We were like, should we go higher? Five, six? No. Yeah, no, I would <laughs> be, I I had this conversation with someone recently and I was like, Letterboxd, top four, and then I, it was my turn. I go, okay, I'm not doing that all the time. <laughs> so I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. No, um, no, you I love that. Some great answers for your film you really have like a grasp of film so you, we're very happy Thank to you. have you on our podcast you fit in <laughs> wonderfully um what are some of the things that inspired you to get into acting and filming and performing i think i didn't even really realize it at the time just being from tulsa and being in oklahoma i just to me theater and movies was just something i could enjoy not something i necessarily thought i could do but just from such a young age i was just always playing and you know, playing pretend and that brought me joy entertaining people in my family brought me joy and you know I grew up with my sister and my little camera and we made the most obscure films and I would come and edit them on my computer and janky iMovie and I loved doing singing at school and being in plays and in musicals and that eventually you know, it's transferred over to me doing like community theater where I saw that you could actually take this a little bit more seriously. I didn't really realize that. Again, children's theater, being young. Uh, but again, watching television and watching movies that felt kind of out of my grasp and nobody in my family has any history or experiences with that either. So it wasn't something that felt very tangible. And it wasn't until I was about... You know, I think I was 11 or 12 years old and I had found, my mom had found a workshop in Oklahoma City that was just like, you know, a week long, five day or something summer workshop to just play and pretend. And one day you learned how to do stunts and the next day you, and um, it was very fun and it was a good foundation, but it also wasn't anything incredibly serious. But the woman there saw some potential in me and that's the only reason I have any connections or did anything. Um, and I owe my life to her. I was with her earlier today. She's a phenomenal acting coach and human being. Um, but really growing up, I just, I, I loved performing and entertaining. It just always felt not just for other people, but for myself. I have always been such an avid reader and writer my whole life and playing the piano and singing. I just love art and I always have. And people in my family are creative in a lot of different ways some, you know, it's musically and some it's through photography and things like that. And I always just had a family that was very supportive of the things I wanted to do. And in all the home videos we have, when I'm wanting to put on a show, everyone is incredibly patient. And I can only pray to yeah. be that patient with my children when they're trying to put on shows that are probably not as entertaining as they think they are. Um, but I just, yeah, I, I feel lucky that I kind of, was at the right place at the right time, but I just loved art. And I don't think it was until that age of being kind of 12 or 13 that I started noticing performances and I started noticing film. And there was some definitive things of watching girls that were not much older than me in mm -hmm. some films that I was like, oh, it's not just me appreciating it. I want to do that. That was kind of that age where I was just like, how do you like, how can you do that? Right. And um, there was a film that shot in Oklahoma Oh my goodness. I don't know. Again, I was probably 11 or 12 years old and they called for extras just to sit in the background of a stadium, of a arena or something like that. And I remember sitting up there and I was watching all the actors work and I was like, I'm not meant to be up here. I'm supposed to be down there. So that's when that itch kind of changed and I had more drive to figure it out and pursue it, I guess. And I feel lucky that my family was with me all the way through that. Um, but yeah, it's really kind of come full circle to see the way there's actually such a presence of art and film and things in Tulsa and Oklahoma now more than
than ever for sure. But um, yeah, I just kind of grew up jumping around and pretending and it got me somewhere, I guess. But yeah, there was no real, yeah, exactly. real, yeah. real structure to it. I just, yeah, kind of right place at the right time. And that's amazing. You know, it sounds like obviously your, your mother had a big influence on you and you've mm-hmm. been doing this for a long time now, like you said, going back to 11 or 12. Um, who have been some of the other big influences in your career? Um, not, not necessarily from a performative standpoint, but just, you know, in the guiding you from uh, being a child actor uh, through today. Yeah. Um, I, Michelle DeLong, who again was the, the woman I spoke of, she was that coach at that summer workshop that saw something in me and communicated that to both me and my mom and my dad and um, invited me to take some classes with her. I didn't realize you could take, you know, acting classes for film or for television to learn techniques or things. And at, at that age, you were learning very foundational things, nothing that was incredibly intricate, but things that had a lot of impact and longevity. And I began working with her and through her connections quickly got connected to my first agent and manager and things like that. And I owe so much to her and I've maintained a relationship with her and she helps me so much, whether that's going over a new script or working on an important audition or just being a friend, answering questions when it comes to the business, helping me, you know, guide me on what things I want to pursue and the kind of actress and performer I want to be. She's like an encyclopedia of knowledge. Anytime I've brought any script to her, she knows exactly who is involved. Every name is a familiar name, a familiar face to her. It's truly incredible. And I feel like I've only gotten some of the work I've gotten because of her. You know, I auditioned for an Aaron Sorkin film. And when we got that script, she was like, this is his rhythm. You do not add any words that are not written. You do not add any ums that are not there. And, you know, I was familiar with his work, but I was also 17 or something at the time. So everything she says to me is so important and valuable. And she's also just been a very grounding person through my life and my career. And so she's definitely been a huge mentor to me in those ways. Um, and I really feel like, honestly, in all the the jobs that I've done thus far, especially in some of the films that I've done, and I did a, a series, a comedy series, and being very young during some of those projects, and sometimes being the only child in some of those projects, um, with the exception of one or two things, um, I feel very grateful that a lot of people just kind of took me under their wing you know sean hayes is somebody for me when i did a i did a sitcom with him um, 10 years ago and um (laughs) um, it's so scary to say um but he's just been lovely to me to this day and is a dear friend and a mentor and somebody that has helped me with a lot of things in this business and a lot of questions i've had and a lot of hard things to navigate or decisions to make and um i just really look up to him and Lynette Hal Taylor, who was a producer of Captain Fantastic, and, and Matt Ross, who's the director. Those have been two people that have really been there for me as well and are so willing to pick up the phone and talk me through anything. And it's been really lovely having people that I've worked with that feel like friends and really, but also mentors and have love and respect for me, truly. There's a lot of people I look up to, like you said, with performances and things like that and people I aspire to work with and to be like but the most influential people for me have truly been the people that have kind of held my hand through all of this because like I said my family and me knew nothing about any of this or about this business in the slightest so there was a lot of curveballs and a lot of learning and lessons that we you know navigated along the way and I think it'll always be like that because that's just life in general but I feel very yeah. lucky for how young I was and for how a little bit ignorant we just were about the business and things like that, that I was really taken care of by some wonderful people. Um, every once in a while, you hear stories about things kind of going awry or going wrong. And oh, yeah. that happens, especially with young people and especially with young people, with parents that are new to the business and, and mm. are just trying to do their best for their kids and navigate things. And yeah, I really appreciate that 
through being young and through some of the jobs that I've had, that I had people that were kind of like treated, you know, they were friends to my parents and they treated me as if I were their own and helped me make decisions as if I were their own. And I've just felt very taken care of. And it's gotten me to the point where I'm at now where I feel like I can advocate for myself and my family's learned a lot. And so I really owe a lot of my knowledge and my yeah just like the way the way i navigate the business i feel like i owe a lot to those people for sure yeah it's nice to have a lot it sounds like the kind of support system that you just uh, it's it's like almost uh luck is involved um oh yeah you can't pay you can't pay for support like that you know yeah no yeah i feel very Uh, fortunate I wanted to ask about uh, Aaron Sorkin. Molly's Game was actually one of my favorite movies the year that it came out. Um, really? I saw it several times, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and I watched it again recently. And Sorkin is an incredible writer, but I'm curious about his him as a director. That was mm-hmm. his directorial debut, and you got to be a part of that. How was it being with that first-time experience? I felt just so beyond lucky to even be there. Um, I tried to be as present as possible, but I felt so lucky even with kind of the smaller role that I had. Aaron always expressed to me how important that part was. And, you know, I never got the full script. Um, It was very, you know, uh, confidential, but I was shown Your part only kind of thing? Yes, my part only kind of thing. But I was shown a lot of, you know exclusive home videos and things like that that are you know they're not anywhere to be found so i feel very lucky for some of the intel that he gave me that molly herself provided to him and you know but he always expressed to me that just because it's you know you just have these x amount of scenes it's so important it's so important and i felt very valued by him as a performer and he always let me know how it was that character was going to come back into play kind of throughout the story or that version of that younger character. He was just lovely, though. He's just a lovely person. And I'm 90% sure that my first day of filming was one of the first days of shooting. One of my scenes, one or two of my scenes took place at the very beginning of the shoot. And then one of my, like, short little blurbs or scenes was shot at the very end of the shoot. So I went to Canada for the very beginning of it. They filmed for you know, a few months and then I went back and got to kind of close it out. So it was a really cool experience. And as a director, he was just very, very kind. And as a first time director from the days that I was there, I could tell he was very collaborative. You know, most of my scenes, if not all my scenes were with Kevin Costner, who plays um, Molly Bloom's dad. And he's an incredibly talented director himself. And so you know, we'd be sitting at the dinner table getting ready to film and he would just kind of scope out the space and say, we need this to be more messy. We, we've been sitting, you know, just little things just that he noticed and ways that he would bring himself in as a director, but not overstep, but just things that he was very collaborative. And Aaron was very receptive of that. And also when giving me direction, he was somebody that was never going to pull me aside and verbatim give me a line read, even though I know exactly how... I know in his head, he's so particular. You can watch anything he's done and you Mm -hmm. know it's him. I know in his head, he could hear it a certain way and see it a certain way, but he never wanted to explicitly show me that because he wanted me to figure it out. But he had this really interesting way of of conveying that to me. So we'd shoot a scene and he'd pull me aside. He's like, you're almost there. I just need this detail from you. I need you to do, you know, just give me a little more, a little less. And... But it all made sense when he pulled me aside, and it was very encouraging. I never felt overwhelmingly stressed on that set, as I feel like something at that magnitude could feel like. You know, oh, we're on a sure, uh, yeah. on a schedule, get going. You're just popping in. You know, he made me feel like okay, these kind of in ways are your scenes, and um, we're here for you, and and we're going to give you the time to figure it out. So it was a lovely experience, and. Um, he was so inclusive of me during the process of when that film came out. You know, we premiered it at um, TIFF, and I had just started college, but he reached out and was very adamant that I was included in that because the rest of the cast, you know, was there. And so I got That's to go, awesome. and it was just lovely. And he's also he's cool. also really been somebody that, um, through the years, I've kept in touch with and has been incredibly lovely and supportive and will 
answer questions and just be a mentor. And um, I would give anything to work with him again, but I feel so fortunate to have just worked with him even once. And during his kind of directorial like feature debut, that was really special. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Nice. Well, I'm excited to start talking about breakup season now. Um, we just, all three of us saw it um, a few days ago. Oh, so really? it's pretty fresh in our minds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We all really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. And I, I just want to know, how did you get involved with this? How did the script get to you? What was that process like? Thank you. Yeah. So oh man, that was December of 2022, uh, like right around Christmas, I was sent the script and was asked to audition. And I read it over and I was really intrigued by the concept of it. I mean, at the end of the day, yes, it's just about this young relationship and it's about kind of the falling out of that relationship. But there's so much gravity to that in everybody's actual, in in real life. You know, I feel like everybody goes through that first real relationship or first heartbreak. And if you're not going through it, your best friend is or your sibling is. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed what I read on paper. And I was like, this could come to fruition in so many different ways, but I'm going to trust what I'm reading because that's what you have to start with first. And um, that's with anything. It's like, you it can you can read something great. You can translate in a whole other way. Um, I had no idea who else was going to be involved. And I just was like, I'd love to audition based off of what I've read. And I'd love to have a conversation with Nelson, the director. And so I did the initial tape and he asked to meet with me and you know, do a callback where we talked, you know, a little bit more in depth about some of the scenes. And I got to know his vision and his heart a little bit more. And that was all kind of right around and before Christmas time. And then after Christmas and New Year's, I got the call that I got the part and was super excited and still had no idea who else was going to be in it, which, again, was a little daunting but i just really even for nelson being you know a young and first time feature filmmaker i just really trusted our conversations Mm -hmm. and you know i at the end of the day for me i love reading a good story and in my mind can visualize all the way that that can come to life and you know i'm young and i am still figuring out my way in this business and so even though nelson's like this is my script and all you can do is trust me and my vision and what I'm telling you. I did because he's just so confident in particular and kind and made me so confident in him and in the project and working with people. It was the first time I worked with younger filmmakers that were all kind of new, like we're all figuring this out together. And that was a really special experience. And slowly I started hearing names of the other cast members were trickling in and that got me excited. And it wasn't until maybe a week before or so that I found out that Ben was going to be played by Chandler. So once I got that news, that was very encouraging because he's very talented and a lot of people obviously know him for his role in The Walking Dead. So Mm -hmm. that instilled a lot of confidence in me and I was so excited to just meet everybody. And we got to set that first week of February in a very rural town in Oregon. And we had this little camp, you know, for a month. And it was lovely and upon meeting everybody for the first time we got along so well but then there was just kind of this moment like a day or two in when we started filming that we all kind of really got excited about each other and confident in what we had as a cast and our kind of rhythm and with Nelson and with the crew and we all kind of found our drive a little bit and from then on it was just an incredible exciting experience i'm not going to say it was smooth all the time because no Mm. indie film is ever smooth all the way (laughs) but i have such respect for the way that this cast and crew handled those typical indie film bumps that came in the road they were Mm -hmm. our producers and our crew were incredible and with the time and schedule and the resources that we had had i am honestly really pleasantly surprised and blown away by what I've seen on the screen because what we shot for 15 days um we had a lot of you know most of it takes place in the house but we had a lot of things that were on location we had a lot of things that were one and done and we did not have a lot of time and we were in blizzards and storms and it was kind of crazy and so what they were able to pull off I thought was really impressive and I'm really proud of it and I'm excited for people to see it 
Yeah, you mentioned uh, figuring things out and kind of doing things for the first time as a cast mm-hmm. and a crew. This, to my knowledge, this is the first time uh, you and Chandler both were romantic leads. So mm-hmm. how was navigating that process? And was it nice to have somebody to go through it with? Absolutely. It was really interesting because Chandler and I ended up relating on a lot of things in a lot of ways, just in the roles that we've had up until this point. And even though they've you know, been different in their own ways, we've still been the kid you know the kid on set the kid in the film the son the daughter um and this was for both of us our first romantic lead but really our first roles as actual adults and so that was really exciting I felt like it was a way for us both to kind of challenge ourselves and just kind of try to step out of being perceived as a kid because I think when you start acting as a young person a child Mm -hmm. In ways, you kind of always feel like you're going to be perceived that way. It's, you know, even now I'll take meetings and I'll talk to people for roles that, you know, says the character's 25. I'm like, that's too old. I'm like, I'm, that's my age. That's okay now. (laughs) But in my mind, I'm like, you know, is someone in the audience still perceiving me as a child? It's just kind of this weird thing that I think a lot of child actors deal with in this kind of transitional phase. Um, And... It was the perfect film to do it, and it was the perfect group of people, and it was really fun, and and we just got along so well, and we're very yin yang. When we have filmed, we have such different personalities, but it worked so well as our characters, but also in real life, the way that we kind of were there for each other during the process and everything, and the way that we prepared, and it was a really fun experience, and it was just nice to kind of get that first film as adults, kind of out of our system and off our chests and it felt good to also enjoy what we saw in the end (laughs) yeah yeah you know you just um it kind of helps too this is a very uh, this is a very you know kind of adult scenario that you talk about how relatable it is and how a lot of people go through first relationships and breakups this is kind of a worst case scenario breakup because Mm -hmm. of the it's the trap, the, the, the absolutely, like the absolute worst. Yeah, <laughs> yeah yes. and and your character in the movie is very isolated while being surrounded, and I was kind of wonder. I, personally, I kind of wondered since you guys shot on location, you had this kind, this this real house um, that you, mm-hmm. you shot in. Um, did that setting uh, was that helpful to the process of trying to communicate that isolation? Um, oh, a- absolutely. And, yeah. I, Absolutely. The the story of the house in and of itself is so funny because um, Rika, the homeowner, was gracious enough not only to let us use her house to film in, but she kind of just became one with the crew as well. By day two, she had her own headset That's and really she cool. was just doing any miscellaneous thing that was needed. Um, you That's know, amazing. <laughs> on independent films and any films, you have departments that are doing different things. But on films like this, everyone's kind of crossing over just to help each other. Uh, fill in the gaps and she was just so game to be helpful and two of our producers and the director stayed at that house for the month that we shot it was a big house in the film we honestly kind of make it look smaller and 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 shut off a lot of areas of the house you know this room was this is hair and makeup and this was the green room and this is the you know so um we had a whole area of the house that was just kind of for the cast and crew and in the in between and but also they were staying there. And Nelson, I believe, got there weeks before we even start, started filming. So him and Rika became very close buddies, and she's been super involved in the process. So the house became this unit for everybody, and it was this place we all knew we were going to wake up at six a.m. and be, and sometimes we'd be living there in the middle of the night. And uh, but it definitely was confined, and it was a lot of tightness. And most of the story really takes place in that house. And we all got really comfortable there, but there was also just constant, you know, moving parts. So I feel like it became super familiar. And for the the characters that play the family, it really did feel like home because it, we there were times we had long days and someone pop into one of the many bedrooms and <laughs> crawl into it. Rika's like crawling under the covers, getting bed. Um, I think a couple of us had to stay there one night due to like filming situations. And so, yeah, we got really cozy there. So the house is a character in the film in and of itself for sure yeah it was it was a great experience but it definitely was crazy to kind of be there every day for a month <laughs> yeah yeah i do want to talk about one of my favorite scenes in the film i want to ask you about mm-hmm. how that went 
without spoiling too much about it, there's a fairly intense dinner scene near the beginning mm-hmm. of the movie mm-hmm. uh, where Cassie's character meets Ben's family uh, mm-hmm. for the first time. And I'm wondering what was filming that scene like because there is a there's a real um, intense like almost a gotcha argument between you and his older brother. Mm-hmm. And I want to know, yeah, what was it like? And what was it like to film it against Jacob Wysocki, who I, kn- I know is a very funny man? Yes, <laughs> is that yes, difficult? Yes. That, first of all, that was, you know, that scene was one of my audition scenes. It's my fa- one of my favorite scenes in the film. It was one of my favorite scenes to do. I think we all have agreed, all six of us have agreed on that. And it was also our first scene where we were all together. Um, I met Jacob earlier that day, which was kind of perfect. I had I had like the day before off. It was the one day I had off. That was the day he got into town at the very top of the shoot. Um, and they had some pickups and little things that they were doing. And that was the first day I met him, which was kind of perfect because we became super close and very buddy buddy. But it was wonderful to kind of not know him and to have this very intense kind of explosive scene with him. And that is all we did that day for about 10 hours. That's all we did with that scene. That is the only thing that was on the schedule that day. And Nelson was very particular in how he wanted that shot. But it also gave us a lot of room as actors to know that we were going to have so many chances to make many different choices. You know, we did a master shot and we would do some two shots. And then every single person got their close-up, which doesn't sound crazy for a film, but for an indie film like this to dedicate a whole day to this scene and to do this much coverage, Mm -hmm. it is a lot. And so it was really wonderful that that was planned out and executed for all of us. Um, And that scene was so much fun because, again, it was the first one we all shot with the six of us and the rhythm was just there. Everyone just kind of slid into their characters. It really set the tone for the rest of the the shoot and Jacob is so talented he's so talented as a dramatic actor and I think I, the funniest people always are I, you know um <laughs> yeah he yeah. he makes all of us laugh until we cry he had some improv in that scene particularly that had you know the the camera guys and the, the the boom operator everyone's like shaking trying not to to move equipment because everyone's laughing so hard behind the scenes and we all kind of have to be mortified at the table and it was so inter- we were so interested to see which little one liners throughout the film really were going to make the cut cuz he had some really good ones um but it was so much fun to be opposite of him and to sit with him right next to me because again that was one of my audition scenes and I was reading that with a wonderful coach and a wonderful reader, but being with other actors and seeing how that comes to life was so exciting and it helped me figure out who my character was and my own techniques and how I was going to navigate communicating with this family. And he's just so incredibly talented. So it was such a fun scene and um, it's crazy to watch it. it. It's a long scene when you watch it. It's nuts to think on that day how much effort went into that. But it was really exciting because Nelson got to sit. He said, you know, he sat in the editing room. He really got to see every single choice from everybody, every moment. Nobody was lost. Nobody um, had any lack of coverage. And so it was. it's it's our little secret ad, you know, being in it, getting to sit there and watch all the best moments kind of come together to create this really complex, explosive scene. But it was really fun. And Nelson always jokes that all the, pretty much all the movies I'm in, there's some kind of like intense scene at dinner. So this just adds to the, <laughs> adds to the list. But yeah, it was my favorite. It was so much fun. And Well, I can see why. I mean, you're, you're both great in it. The back and forth you guys have is both like, it, it's, it's such a funny conversation, but it's in such serious context. Mm-hmm. And that's what I love about it. Mm-hmm. And it, and it stems it's from, it, it, not to a T, but I, there's some truth in that conversation from some, you know, Nelson had, was so wonderful throughout the film saying, you know, this is a story of my friends or this is something that happened to me or this is something that happened to my dad or whatever. And she was so great about always painting this picture. And there was such an element of um, intimacy with all the scenes, knowing like that they all have, truly had origins. And, and while there was all these aspects of 
these, this creative way that it was tied into this family. It was really cool for Nelson. He always had this picture and this story that he could tell us, which was super helpful. We mentioned that the scenario of the breakup is not great. The whole situation yeah. is not great. But there's also a level that struck me in this movie of kindness and honesty, especially from the parents, uh, mm -hmm. James Urbaniak and Brooke Hogan. Mm -hmm. How are they to work with? And is that something that stood out to you when you read it, that level of kindness and honesty? I don't see that in a lot of movies. First of all, the two of them are absolutely lovely. James is such an old pro. He's done anything and everything and is super talented. And I was super excited to see that he was on board and especially in a role like this. He was, you know, even expressed once we got there how just fun and interesting this character was for him to play. And so that was really cool to work with him. He's so gentle and talented and quirky and makes just wonderful choices. And then Brooke is a total newbie and she just crushed it um she hasn't even she did. truly been acting for that long and she just went into it full force and she took it just so seriously and she was just so excited to be there and she was always the person that if a day got long you could look over at brooke and she'd be like we're making a movie we're making a movie you know <laughs> and just reminded all of us just how joyful and lucky we are to be doing this and she was also just so natural she was just so good and I can't wait to see, you know, all the things that she's already done and the things she's doing next because she's just joyful and she's also talented. And the relationship between the two of them as characters and as parents was really unique because one thing we always talk about in this movie is that, yes, this is a story about Ben and Cassie and the issues of their relationship. But you see the intricacies of a lot of different relationships in the film, whether that's someone talking about a current relationship about a person who's not there someone talking about a relationship with the past or this really beautiful marriage between these parents that have also had their own journeys and mm -hmm. you get to see all these different layers of relationships there's also a you know like a sibling love story there there's a lot going on but what was really cool for cassie too is because cassie's family dynamic is very different than that of ben's and so her getting to be around a family that even through this bickering your arguments or disturbances that they have they truly love each other and get along and my character doesn't necessarily have that so it was really fun to be able to experience this kind of kindness and compassion for cassie through these characters and yeah it was cool for me because i kind of i get to be the lens for the audience into the family i'm meeting them for the first time too so yeah. um brooke and uh, james were really their character you know they were just lovely to work with and the way they portrayed their characters being so gracious to their children, to each other and to Cassie is really cool. Yeah. Do you find that you uh, relate to Cassie or is there anything from this story that you feel like you're going to take away going, going forward? I think in a lot of ways, Cassie and I are, you know, cause she's somebody we're similar in certain ways. She's somebody that really wants things to go right and wants to be put together. And I think sometimes, as you see at kind of the top of the film, can be a little bit of a people pleaser. And I feel like I have in the past definitely related to that and brought that to the table of just wanting to make sure everyone else is good and wanting to be put together and wanting to present that version of herself. And it was really fun playing Cassie in a lot of ways because I feel like in certain ways I can also relate to Ben a lot. I feel like I can be very anxious and detail oriented and I overthink and I'm in my head and it playing Cassie made me very compassionate to the people in my life that are a little bit more like her. And I learned a lot about myself by being opposite of a character like Ben. So it was really interesting because I, you know, the story itself, I'm not experienced that at that level or anything like that. Um, or even a, a breakup like that. But it was really interesting. I hope most haven't. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, <laughs> it's rough. Right. But it is interesting because I, you know, what Chandler and I always said, like when you watch it, you've been Ben before, you've been Cassie before, you know somebody that's been one of them. So I just had, I learned a lot about 
some of my just through doing it I had a lot more understanding of some of my friends and looking at their relationships and I can be like oh you're totally Ben and you're totally Cassie I mean you can kind of point them out and that was what was really interesting is that it's just this story about you know we, we see a lot of stories about high school love and like young young love and then we see stories about young married couples or people that are engaged about to get married and we see divorce and we see um, loss and and you know someone being a widow and things like that but there's this like weird kind of gap of being just in your early slash mid-20s and you aren't talking about getting married yet but you're just trying to figure out if your relationship is worth it like are we are is this what i need to be doing at this age it's such a transformative time in your life and so nelson and i and chandler talked about that a lot and i just appreciate that there's this film brings gravity to those relationships because they are really important um and i love that cassie and ben despite everything do have a lot of respect and love for each other and i like that kind of just don't know where things are going to go throughout the film you kind of have to to guess um and yeah it was really fun i learned a lot more than i thought i was going to I, I enjoyed the script but then doing it and being with the other actors i learned a lot about a lot of people in my life that's great awesome. yeah i really felt like i connected to both of the leads mm. in this movie as well at different times. Mm. Uh, I think that's a really insightful thought there that, that you can see Ben or Cassie in yourself at really any moment mm -hmm. in time throughout this. And I think what I really loved about the movie and what kind of sealed the deal for me is like, okay, I, I did really enjoy what this is telling us, was that it's so real. Um, mm. I had two like thought processes when I'm watching the movie. I was like, well... I feel like um, this could either become a situation where they fall back in love together mm -hmm. because they're trapped with each other, mm -hmm. or it could go uh, the opposite direction. And there are so many points through the movie where I felt like, oh, I don't know which way it will go, actually. And so I appreciated that a lot. And I wanted to just kind of ask if that stuck out to you at all when you read it, um, if that played any role in you choosing this film oh absolutely absolutely because you know i have such a vivid memory of reading it for the first time and just going oh i wonder if this is going to happen or i hope that this happens and i just was really curious and it's just a very real story you're just kind of plopped into this house with these people they might as well be your friends or your neighbors but i still just had this like eagerness and desire to like what what happens and it is very real. And there was so much. I, I was, I've been told that by a lot of people that have, have seen it, um, you know, different film festivals and stuff, kind of that same thing. Of, it felt very real and it felt like you were kind of sitting in on things you weren't supposed to be sitting on. And truly that's, yes, moments that's a good you, way were, to put it. you were, you were reading for them and then moments that you weren't. And, right. um, n the characters are not black and white. There is no right person or wrong person. With any character in in the film, maybe with the exception of the parents, they're lovely. Um, <laughs> but even then, obviously, they have their own complexities. But they really kind of are ground, right. you know, um, they're grounding for for the, the all the kids in the film, kids. Um, but that's what I really loved about Cassie and Ben is that they were not black and white. And there were moments when I was watching it, I um, had some of my family at the premiere, and after they said why did Cassie get that mad? And I'm like, exactly. Right. It's not, you're not no, right. as always supposed to agree or moments when it's just like, yeah. God, what has Ben doing? Um, so even many times even, I wanted to tell yeah. Ben to shut up. Yeah. <laughs> um, even when we were filming, it's so funny, you know, Nelson would yell cut and there's, there's a couple of like visceral reactions from the crew that just like, Oh, that's just, that was so awkward. And it's supposed to be, that's, I mean, yeah, right. of course. And so I love that people kind of have that reaction of just, you know, it, nothing. it's nothing too crazy, but it just feels like you're spying on these people because it feels so It feels so real. And it felt real doing that. And Chandler just absolutely became this character and was, was wonderful to work with. But I loved that it wasn't black and white. The movie's completely gray and you don't really know what's going to happen and you don't know what you want to happen. And that's life. <laughs> that's really true. Definitely, yeah. 
Um, I want to move over to Tulsa time here mm-hmm. for a little bit. Uh, you're from Tulsa. We're from Tulsa. Uh, Breakup season is going to be showing uh, in July here at the Circle Cinema Film Festival, one of the oldest uh, movie theaters here in our city. Um, for And Tulsa itself as a city is getting a lot of attention in arts film lately. So I'm mm-hmm. interested in your perspective as a performer. What do you think it is that makes Tulsa stand out lately? And what is it about Tulsa that's kept you here so far for your career? Well, first of all, uh, you know, for me, I was born and raised here. And what I really appreciate first about my family is that they're here and they love it here. And so when I started off and I was working, you know, I have other people in my family that are not in this business. And just because I am doesn't mean everybody needs to be. So I, you know, had a wonderful school that was so willing to support me and help me when I traveled but there was this understanding that I was always going to come home and be a student and I just love the community and I love the people here and my family was adamant about helping me pursue my dreams without uprooting everybody else's and so you know everyone else in my life got to continue to have their life here as did I and I think through being young and having some of the experience that I had I felt like at a young age I just learned to appreciate, I just really appreciated it at a young age. You know, I, I loved going to LA and working or getting to go to events and things like that. But I just loved coming home and just like breathing and people here are kind and, and they're supportive. And I was never somebody that, you know, had the, too much of an itch to like get out of their hometown. I totally get that. Everyone, you know, wants to go out and experience things, but I just loved it. It just, for me, it was how it was grounding. And when I was younger, I don't feel like I was as in tune with the way even art and film specifically was developing here because I never really worked here. I, you know, did my very, very first film, uh, Home Run, the movie, which was a Mm -hmm. Christian faith-based film outside of, I might have done that, shot in Owasso, but, you know, relatively Tulsa. And that was the first time... Maybe the only time I've worked in, in, in Tulsa. And then I was gone, kind of, and I was hopping around doing things. So Tulsa, for me, was just coming home. It was like the reprieve and just getting to... This is where I was a kid and went to school and went to football games and did everything. And it really wasn't until I got older that I was able to look back and say, like, wow, how wonderful I was able to have this career and do things and still be home. I didn't never, I never had to completely uproot myself from my life. I had a very supportive team and people around me that told me just to stay put and just to enjoy myself in my life. And so once I kind of got a little bit older and realized that, then I realized, oh my gosh, there's actually a lot going on. And it's, it's been here and it's been ever changing and developing, but it's been so wonderful to see the way that circle cinema and the Cherokee Nation film office. I say that because I'm Cherokee myself and um, everything that Stone Harjot's doing and the Tulsa, you know, film collective and just to see the way that all these people are coming together. And there are so many artists here. I, I feel like I didn't realize that until I was an adult. And it's been so beautiful to see. It's so inspiring and encouraging. And it's not just big films coming into the state and you know, bringing crew from LA or New York. It's, you know, there are things going on here with really amazing Oklahoma filmmakers and there are talented people everywhere. And it's really encouraging to to see and it's exciting to see. And Circle Cinema has been so lovely to me over the last few years. You know, Breakup Season is the fourth film that they're showing, uh, doing a screening um, of mine for me. So they've been so supportive and encouraging and I, yeah, as an adult, it's just really exciting to see. It just shows me that, you know, I can be here and I, you know, for the first time feel more driven to be a part of what's going on in Tulsa now more than ever. I'm not in school anymore. I'm not just trying to, you know, um, focusing on other things. I feel like, you know, mentally and physically, I'm more present than ever. And it's been really exciting to see how it's unfolding and I hope to be a part of it. It's really special because there's a lot of art here and there are a lot of talented people here. And if those people choose to stay here and help us build it, you know, that's when it's going to rise and become special instead of everybody having to jump around and leave, you know, we can do it here. So it's really cool. Yeah. Yep. I believe that too. And I, it's great to hear 
you talk about having such a good experience with being able to live here mm-hmm. and work um, all over the country, really. It doesn't have to just be Hollywood anymore, yeah, which yeah. is amazing. Um, yeah, and you know, you, mer- you mentioned Circle being so supportive of you a lot. Um, I want to know, how does it feel to be honored with a medallion on their Walk of Fame coming up? I was not expecting that for right? sure. Right? That's no, amazing. No. Congratulations. I, thank you. I'm going to just be thankful <laughs> because, yeah, I took a look at I, I I'm already aware of what it is. I look at it every time I go, but I <laughs> was sent a little link, too. It's like, check out the other people that, that are on there, and I'm, like, clicking through the list, and... Um, yeah, I, I feel lucky. And I, I you'll feel be very, there with them soon. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I feel <laughs> it's 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 very kind. I truly feel honored, and if anything, it's really motivating for me and inspiring for me because some of the other names on that list are pretty pretty inspiring and remarkable themselves. So, if anything, it's just it's such a kind thing. It's it's I feel very honored, and it's really motivating. It's you know there's so many times and this business that it's just this is a crazy business to be in and it it can it can get tough sometimes and the people that make it special independent theaters and people that love movies and people in my own community those are the people that are inspiring for me and the people that kind of keep me going and it's it's it's, it is encouraging and so i yeah there's not a lot to say i really just i feel very honored and circle cinema what they do and what they do for Tulsa and for film in general in the community. It's my favorite theater. It's my favorite place to go. So I, yeah, I can't wait. I told my family and they were, they know how much Circle Cinema just as a theater and the people there mean to me. So I, it's very kind and yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's, it's, so last question here. And, uh, if you go in either way, I think if no, uh, if you had someone coming to Tulsa, you had a friend coming to Tulsa, what would you take them to see? What would you do? Or um, what are the experiences you mm. think they should see when they come to Tulsa? Go and see. I would take someone to see a film at Circle Cinema, not just any film. I've taken people there to see things that maybe are a little bit more off the beaten path. They're unconventional. And I think it's really important for theaters to show things like that because that just really supports and shows that art and different kinds of art are valued and the friends I've taken to see those kinds of films actually really enjoy them. So, Circle Cinema for sure. (laughs) Hmm. Of of late, I think everyone would use to go to the Greenwood Rising Museum. I think that's really unique and important. And it's a part of Tulsa history, but it's a part of American history mm-hmm. that not enough people are aware of. And yeah. the museum itself is, they've done an, an incredible job. It's beautiful. It's so informative. But then just the Greenwood District and that whole area is just really cool. There's a lot to do in a lot of cool spots. And downtown in general has just kind of blossomed over the last few years, I feel like. So oh, really definitely... Has just kind of venture downtown and let me think those are kind of my is, two is, number ones is, is Tulsa Stonehenge on the list have you heard about <laughs> Wait, do you know about, about Stonehenge yet I know about Stonehenge I was talking with my mother about that today I I didn't I, I had heard the Stonehenge joke I I didn't know if it's there to stay but if it is maybe one day it'll be a good story yeah, now no, it's a little crazy. <laughs> I think they're planning yeah. to eventually finish that thing, but at this point, they have to create a small monument just to, you know. Yeah, I <laughs> feel like advantage. that whole that whole area has been in development since I was before I could even try. Right. So just it's a continuation. Yeah, it's nostalgic just to see the constant um, <laughs> development. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Samantha, we've taken more of your time than we asked for, so thank you so much for no, staying I, with us longer. Um, I enjoyed it. We're so excited to see the film again premiere at Circle uh, in July. Excited to see you uh, get your medallion. Um, thank so you. there's a lot to look forward to, uh, and we appreciate you taking time to talk with us tonight. Yes, thank you so much. This was so lovely. I had a great time. It's so nice meeting you all, and I appreciate you guys wanting to talk to me and for supporting Breakup Season and Circle and everything. It's wonderful. Mm-hmm.